Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Chief. Uh, I just came back from Bay State Commons. Uh, Zip Trip is in town today. Uh, and I'm going to introduce our guest speaker and give you a quick update because I head back down there. They're doing a wedding live on camera down there. So, wow. in case they need any help, I want to give them a hand. Uh, so, the police department things are going really well. Um, uh, hopefully, some of you were at uh, the luncheon of the dinner that was put on by the police associations. Uh, it was very well received. Uh, thank you for that, for giving us that opportunity. Um, our canine unit, uh, he's going to be entering uh, the academy again uh, to be certified in narcotics, so we'll have a dual uh, purpose canine, which is really good. Um, one of our uh, participants here advised me that we, just so everyone knows, I guess there was uh, West Nile um, out in the Boston area, so you know, be aware of that. One mosquito. One mosquito tested positive for West Nile, so just something to be aware of. Um, I've talked about numerous times um, about the advocate program and uh, how we're able to help people, you know, in times of crisis. And uh, so today, uh, I'm going to be pleased to introduce shortly Christina. Christina is our clinician that is riding uh, in the cruiser uh, here in Westboro, Northboro, and Southboro. She's going to explain to you some of the statistics and how successful it's been. Uh, and I think it's really important to note that. You know, we're able to have that one more tool in our toolbox to help people. And, and I'll share with you one particular call. Uh, chief Paulus, the Southboro Police Chief, sent me a nice email. They had an incident, uh, a juvenile with a knife. And the officers were able to handle that call uh, and were able to get uh, this young person the help that they needed. And there were no injuries to anyone, which is great. And I thank advocates for providing us with de escalation training for our officers, which is very important very critical. Um, but what's really special about this is when the officers have to go on certain calls and there are other things they have to do and paperwork that has to be completed, we have Christina there to deal with the family, to deal with mom, to deal with siblings, this very critical incident that they've had to deal with, stressful incident. So I think that's a really important piece we need to realize that it's not just about the person in crisis we're trying to help, but it's also about their support system and their family uh, making sure that they have the resources they need. You know, when we have to make a death notification or give someone some really bad news, it's just nice having someone who's really specifically trained and able to help and then also give people uh, resources outside of, of the police department's realm to really help people. So I'm very thankful to my staff, uh, you know, for bringing this program to the boroughs. Um, I think it's been very well received and she's been, I think, accepted with open arms in all three departments. Um, I would probably fighting over at times, uh, to be honest with you, uh, because there is such a need out here. And the last thing, you know, I'll remind people of is, you know, we want to prevent, you know, victimization to be safe. So we're going to be creating a crime prevention program very shortly with Officer Jeff Johnson. Uh, he's developing a program where we're going to be able to do evaluations of your home, businesses, safety, uh, so I'll be rolling that out soon, so hopefully you can take advantage of that and we'll, we'll bring Jeff in, Officer Johnson in soon to explain what he's going to be accomplishing. So a lot of exciting things are going to be happening. Uh, a lot of it does hinge on us moving back downtown to Forbes. I've been told it's been pushed back again into September, uh, but it's going to happen. And I'll be inviting all of you for an open house when that does happen, uh, hopefully September to early October at this point. Uh, but it's going to be a state-of-the-art facility, like I said, and it's going to be able to allow us to better serve you um, when you see our crime lab and different equipment that we have in there uh, to be able to better serve Westboro. So and there's some, some long-term hiring plans, as you know, and part of that is to make sure that we have a police officer in that building so when you go in there, there's someone there to help you, where right now it could be unmanned at certain times you know, because we don't have dispatch. They're going to be staying at the fire department. So with that being said, thank you for having us, the police department here, uh, the second Friday of every month, please come next month. I've got Liz Haddad from the Worcester County District Attorney's Office coming. Um, she's going to be talking about scams, uh, other ways of keeping you safe. So I'm really excited to have her. Uh, she does a fantastic job. Uh, and again, if you have any ideas, anything that you want to see uh, presented, please give me a call, send me an email, uh, and I'll find a speaker to deal with that specific issue. A lot of people said, Oh, you had Mr. Blaze come in talking about, um, you know, mosquitoes and different things and ticks. 
and, and all that. And it was funny, it was, it was very, very well received. So anything that you think you want to hear or see about, it doesn't have to be police related, please get in touch with me and I'll facilitate a speaker. And that being said, thank you again for having your police department and I'll turn it over to Christina. Thank you, Chief. So I work for advocates, but with, as the Chief said, uh, Westboro, Northboro, and Southboro Police Departments. Um, so Dr. Sarah Abbott, she formed the Jail Diversion Program um, in 2003 in Framingham. It was a pilot. Um, the reason that she launched the program uh, is that there's a disproportionate number of individuals in the Massachusetts criminal justice system with mental health issues. So the, the goal of the program originally was to divert um, people who were going to possibly be charged with um, small crimes to get them the mental health or substance abuse treatment. Well, in that, um, a lot of the officers, their attitudes changed towards mental illness, they were educated more, they were able to have more compassion, more sympathy, and be able to help um, individuals in the community get the resources they needed. Um, so. In 2008, Marlboro, um, they opened their first jail diversion program. Um, 2011 was Watertown, and then in 2015, Ashland, Sherburn, Holliston, and Hopkinton. Um, and then I think most recently, Natick started around the same time that the Westboro, Northboro, and Southboro program began. So I would say our first full month was May. Um, I actually just did our quarterly statistics, and there were we had 18 ER diversions. So of the goal, one part is arrest diversions and the other is emergency room diversions. This is the only model in Massachusetts um, that focuses on both diversions. So when I was just doing my statistics the other day, I realized it's $4,000 every time somebody goes to the emergency room for a mental health evaluation. So in Marlboro and Framingham Emergency <laughs> Departments, um, Advocates has PES, which is Psychiatric Emergency Services. So that's where someone will go get a mental health evaluation and they'll determine whether um, what level of care they need, whether that be a partial hospitalization program, which is a day program, or inpatient treatment, outpatient therapy, whatever that referral would be. Um, so I'm able to do this now out in the community. Um, I've been able to do evaluations when there's an individual who's arrested and that's, they're in the cell. Um, a lot of times people will feel suicidal at that moment. I was able to um, do the evaluation and usually what would happen is an officer would have to be taken um, off duty and go toward, to the hospital with the individual. Um, that, that takes up a lot of time and money and you usually have to call people in from home to come in and help. I was able to do the evaluation in the cell and make sure that the individual was safe and got the services they needed when they were out. Um, so besides the mental health component, I've also learned that pretty much this job you can do a lot. Um, it's more, a lot of people now are calling police departments for social services needs. People calling up, you know what, I'm getting kicked out at the end of the month and I have nowhere to go. Like, where, where do I even look for housing? Who do I go to? questions like that that the officers um, don't always have the time or the resources to know where these things are at so that's where I come in um, I've been able to help people with housing which I feel is a huge huge barrier for a lot of things for people um, like the chief said their death notifications um, I'm able to go and, and the police can't always sit there for three hours and, and sit there with the family and help them process and comfort them that's something that I am able to do um, and the one thing that I really love about working for all three, working with all three departments is that all these officers really care. They really, really do. Um, and I think a lot of people don't really get to see that side of things, especially when, you know, they're trying to enforce laws and um, make sure everybody's safe. But um, I have to say I'm really, really honored to work with Westboro, Northboro, and Southboro Police Departments. Um, they've made this so much, they very welcoming, welcome me with open arms, and I just was a little nervous. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of what else. So they are trying to replicate this model throughout the country. Um, right now, Advocates is the only um, agency in the state that has this model. And so they're able to replicate it. And 
an agency in the other part of the state decides on Western Mass, hey, we really want to have a jail diversion program, but we don't know how, how to even start. Um, we have a training a technical center, and they um, will help that department figure out what, how many, what their statistics are, like how many mental health calls they get, um, what the program would look like, and they help them start that, get the grants, and all of that. Um, with that being said, it, it is a grant-funded program. Um, Department of Mental Health funds it. So it's, um, from my understanding, it's really no cost to the departments. Um, if anything, we help save money. So um, with the emergency room diversion that we had for the last two months, that was $72,000 that was saved um, from unnecessary ambulance rides, um, emergency room evaluations, and sometimes people have to stay there for a day or two just waiting to get um, a clinician to come evaluate them and let them know what level of care they need. So that's been really, really helpful. Um, somebody have any questions before going further? Yes. How do you stay safe in dealing with these people? Because the end of the day, I didn't know that. Okay. So, Boston. Boston. Oh, Boston. 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 Okay. Are you involved with the opioids and drug abuse? Yes, we can get to that in one second. I just want to answer her question. I'm sorry, sir. So, actually, I do have a, a vest that I, I have with me at all times. Um, and so Chief was saying that call that I had the other day, I, I wore that on the call. Um, honestly, I, wait tr I make sure that I will usually tell the officer, you give me the cue when, it, when it's safe, when the scene is safe and I can come. Um, like I said, so I also ride with them throughout the day. I don't just go if there's a mental health call. The idea is that when you're out real time responding, um, you're able to, to get that crisis right there and right then. Um, I've done I've done evaluations on the side of Route Nine um, in the lobby of a nursing home. It really it, they're pretty limitless. Um, but I do I honestly I feel very very safe with the officers. I make sure to stay out of the way so that they can worry about what they're doing at hand and keeping themselves safe, as well as myself. Never that back. No. Um, I, I, also, I previously worked for the Department of Children and Families, and so I learned a lot about safety, and I was always going out on my own. I didn't have anybody else there with me, so I feel pretty safe in this job. <laughs> so advocates, we have um, recovery coaches. And their um, people, their peers, they've been through it themselves, and um, are have been in recovery for a while. And um, you know, if I see somebody who's struggling, and, and they say that they want help, or even if they're a little ambivalent, um, I can, if they're open to it, I can have a recovery coach reach out to them. Um, they will, they will look, help them look for a detox or a treatment facility. Um, they will go with them. So it's really, it's, it's a, an amazing thing that we have. Um, and it's, it's something small, it's not, it's not invasive, it's just somebody being able to sit there with you who's been through it and can give you support and lead you in the right direction, especially it's pretty confusing, the different treatment facilities. If you come, you answer a call mm -hmm. and it has something to do with drugs <coughs> and they need to get help right away. Right. Does that mean that you could actually facilitate getting them into that home a lot faster than them calling and wanting a new, finding out if there's a bed available, waiting or being told if you're drunk that you can get in faster? Can you get them in faster than that kind of a route? Honestly, I don't know if it's faster. I, I mean, it possibly. I've never really looked at what it is for me helping somebody get in versus themselves. Because um, a lot of people don't know unless they've been to treatment quite a few times and then they usually have a preference because they've been to a few places. Um, I actually, I do think, I've seen like when I have referred people to recovery coaches, they've gotten into treatment facilities like within that day. And that's important. Yes, especially when somebody is willing to go, you wanna capture that moment and you wanna keep the momentum. It can take days and days to actually get I, And I, I know what you're talking I have seen that. And I have heard, I don't know if that's so much anymore, um, but I have heard where people were like, well, you know, you need to be intoxicated to come to detox, which exactly. is actually it's counter, it's counterproductive. But because I work for advocates in Marlboro and Framingham emergency rooms, 
um, Advocates PES, which is Psychiatric Emergency Services, they run the psych part of those emergency rooms. So, like I said, when I'm out in the community doing an evaluation and I send somebody to the emergency room, um, usually that's if they're going to have a higher level of care, like an inpatient stay or a detox, or they're looking in to get um, substance use treatment. Um, I'm able to call them directly and say, you know, I just saw so and so. Um, you know, this is my recommendation, and then I type up the evaluation, and they usually will look for a bed if I don't have a chance because I'm I'm usually out on the road. Um, so the communication there is huge. So it's difficult if if they don't go to those hospitals because I can't always follow up. Um, but as far as the other type of follow ups, that's a, I think that's the great thing about this program is that a lot of the officers now that they've gotten used to oh no we have this other tool now um, they'll be even if I'm not there if I'm in another town or I'm off duty um, they'll go to a call they might see that a family's struggling whether it's financially or housing um, or you know the, the child has significant mental health issues and the parents have a difficult time navigating the system which I have to tell you there's not a lot of treat, treatment providers for kids um, so it's a long, long wait, and a lot of parents get really frustrated, understandably. Um, so the officers are able to say, hey, here's, you know, here's what happened at this call. Is there any way? I talked to the mom, and she would love to hear from you. Can you follow up? Um, honestly, I would say and it's still a new program, so people have been very open to it. I would say 70% of the people I call say, yes, I, you know, can you help me? Um, other one, the other percentage probably wouldn't get a call back, but it's an offer, right? Well, thank you for having me. If you had any kind of question about social services or, or needed to talk, please reach out. That's what I'm there for. Thank you.